and he was like, I know, Lord, if you touch these, that they'll be fine. You know? <laughs> You're good. You pass yeah. it through us? What are you doing? What's happening here? Yeah, it's an interview. Is, it, is this an award winning thing? Yeah. So and you're, you're, who are you working for? The Maxwell Institute. Oh, far out. Can, you can we it? check this out? No, no. I'll take it. Yeah, come on. on come look. Come look at this. Come in here. Come look. Yeah, they're not filming right now. Yeah. I can sure. tell you about it. Yeah. <laughs> Would you? So, yeah, I won. Wait for a second. They're still coming in. Don't wait till they all this is a painting I did. I got second place for it in a Book of Mormon art competition. Um, it's called The Journey of the Jaredites in an Ancient Sumerian Style. Um, yeah, so I did this originally on my mission, uh, like I was sketching on the plane. Um, how many of you know the story of the Jaredites? Yeah, do you want to tell it to us briefly? Yep. Um... We have a dish, we prevail these dishes to get across the ocean and so get to the promised land. Uh -huh. Yeah, so there's this guy, brother of Jared, that's yeah, what they call him. And God's like, yeah. well, you need to go to the promised land. I have a place for you. And he's like, okay, cool. And he shows him how to build these boats. They're like little, they're like lemon football boats and they're about like a tree length long and they're super tight, so no water gets into them. Um, and the God's like, you can cut a hole on the top so you can breathe air when it comes up. And the brother of Jared's like, cool, that's great. What do we do when we're like way underwater? Are we just gonna be in the darkness for who knows how long? And God's like, well, I don't know. What do you think you can do? You can't bring fire, you can't bring glass. Um, so what do you do? So the brother of Jared, he makes these little clear rocks and he gives them to God and he's like, okay, I know if you touch these with your finger, then they'll glow. And it happens, they glow. And so they're able to go into the ocean. And I drew them here in this style because this happened a really, really long time ago. This isn't like something that's happening now. So I thought that the people they would draw themselves differently. They wouldn't draw themselves like with long flowing, beautiful, realistic hair. They wouldn't draw themselves with big muscles. Um, they would draw themselves very, very simply. And this is a really rough translation of they went into their vessels and they trusted in the Lord their God. And it doesn't say it like explicitly in the scriptures that there were monsters in the sea, but I was like, what if there were? That would be cool to see or think about. And what would that monster look like? It could be literally anything. The ocean is such a weird place. Thank yeah. you so much. Yeah, of course. Thank y'all for coming. Yeah. Thanks. <laughs> Have a good day, y'all. Thanks for stopping by. Oh. Thank you. <laughs> Please tell me, how did that feel? Though, teaching uh, you teaching you <laughs> it was pretty cool. I had practice. I've been talking about this piece a lot. Yeah. It was cute though. They said that a lot. They're like, it's a really cool piece of art. Yeah. <laughs> Oh man, well, that was fun. So I'm Sierra Newbold. I'm from Cedar City, Utah. Uh, I'm studying art, illustration. I love it so much. I want to illustrate children's books when I grow up, get older. Um, yeah, I served my mission in Nashville, Tennessee. I spoke Spanish there. I just, I absolutely loved it. As I was getting ready for my mission, I was in the airport, 6 a.m all by myself. It was during COVID, so I had my mask on and I was in the airport just like shivering and scared, but also excited, but also feeling nothing. Um, and I started reading my scriptures because that's what you do in the morning. And I read in Ether 6, 
Uh, verse 4, And it came to pass that when they prepared all manner of food, that thereby they might subsist upon the water, and also food for their flocks and herds, and whatsoever animal or fowl that they should carry with them. And it came to pass that when they had done all these things, they got aboard of their vessels or barges and set forth into the sea, commending themselves unto the Lord their God. So I read that. I found out that our plane to Nashville was gonna be delayed. And I was like, this is stressful enough. I don't, I don't wanna miss my plane and be stranded in like Pennsylvania. So I was praying on the plane. I was like, please just let us get to Nashville safely without any hiccups at all. Just like how you blew the Jaredites on their barges across the waters. And I drew in my little missionary sketchbook something that looks like this. It's, it was pretty dang similar. Um, and then I inked it later on in my mission. We all have dark times where we're stuck in big oceans, where we feel confused and lost. But I know that the Lord is there for us. He takes care of us. He has a promised land intended for us. And it's different than what we expect right now. And we don't know how many days it's going to take to get there. For these guys, it took like a year to get there. Can you imagine being in that boat for like a year? You're cramped, you're with the same like five people. I would go crazy. Um, but the Lord has his ways. He got these people there safely. He's going to get us safely to our promised land. And he loves us. I just know how much God loves us. I. I can't comprehend it and I don't understand why he loves us and I don't understand how he does what he does, but I know that he has the power to save. He has the power to move mountains to get us through stormy waters. He has the power to save us from whatever monsters we're facing and I know that he will do it, especially if we're willing to let him. Say that in the name of Jesus Christ, amen.